Welcome! Are you suffering from estrogen dominance? Have you been told that this is strictly a hormone issue? Well, I'm here to tell you that there is very likely a drainage component to estrogen dominance. Now, you're gonna wanna stay till the end because I'm gonna give you the first few steps that I always incorporate when I'm working with somebody that has estrogen dominance. So make sure you stay to the end because it's going to be very applicable and things that you can easily start to do at home. So let's dive in. What is estrogen dominance to begin with? Well, here's the thing. It's going to look different per person. Everybody's going to have their own weak link. And by weak link, what I mean is depending upon what our body has going on, our body is going to show symptoms based on where that weak link is. So Estrogen dominance in some women can look like PMS mood swings, whereas other women might not have that. They may end up having things like tender breasts during different parts of their menstrual cycle. They could end up developing cysts either in their breast tissue or in their ovaries. It could end up getting the diagnosis of PCOS, otherwise known as polycystic ovarian syndrome, which can also be linked to things like insulin resistance. There could be other symptoms such as fibroids, so fibroids in your uterus or endometriosis. There's lots of different symptoms, not to mention the inability to lose weight and the very easy ability to put weight on without doing any of the bad stuff. So if you're somebody that has heavy periods, really long periods, painful periods, or any of the other symptoms that I just mentioned, take a listen because like I said, it is quite possible that it's one or multiple components of your drainage pathways that need some love. So let's talk about what would cause estrogen to go high in the first place because there's really four causes and there could be, you know, like multiple within the person, meaning there could be multiple sources as to why estrogen estrogen is going high. So the very first one is actually the overproduction of estrogen, meaning your body's making more estrogen than it needs. And how this happens is it's usually because it's taking testosterone and converting it over into estrogen. Now, how I like to test and see, okay, what is happening in the body is actually a test called the Dutch test. I prefer this test, especially in menstruating women, even perimenopausal women who are still menstruating regularly, because what it's going to do is it's going to give me a breakdown of all of estrogen's metabolites along with sex hormones. So I'll be able to look at things like progesterone, testosterone, E1, E2, E3, and then the breakdown of it of like E4, E16, all of those. So we can get a much better picture of what your body's doing with those hormones. Because if you're making too much estrogen, the question is then, is it because of a methylation issue? Is it because of an aromatase issue? Where is this coming from? Because the next thing that could be driving estrogen dominance is xenoestrogen. So our exposures to xenoestrogens. Now, xenoestrogens, what they are is they're similar to estrogen, but they have a different chemical structure. The problem though is our body doesn't recognize the difference between estrogen that our body makes and fake estrogen, we're gonna call it, the xenoestrogens. The xenoestrogens are still gonna go and bind to our estrogen receptors in our body, which then means the estrogen that our body is producing is not gonna have anywhere to bind and it's gonna cause and wreak havoc on other problems. So xenoestrogens come from things like plastic, so BPA, and even non-BPA plastics. So the plastics that say like BPA-free doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe. You know, I always recommend instead of using plastics, go to something like glass or stainless steel. The other thing would be things like phthalates, parabens. So parabens are found in a lot of cosmetics like makeup, moisturizer, shampoos, things like that. Phthalates can be in things like perfumes. So other options would be like if you want, you know, instead of perfumes, doing things like essential oils. And we'll get more into this at the very end. But it's also found 
found in food. So our food, if it's heavily sprayed with herbicides and pesticides, those chemicals are actually gonna make it more difficult for our body to manage our estrogen levels. So whenever possible, I highly recommend eating organic food and eating like organic grass-fed, pasture-raised meat products and dairy. Reason being, the conventional way tends to have higher elements in it that's going to shift us into having more of an estrogen dominance like situation. The other thing that goes into it, so those are the first two, the third one is our drainage pathways, meaning improper elimination. Remember, drainage pathways is how our body removes and eliminates toxins and waste products that we're exposed to on a regular basis. And the two that I'm gonna talk about in elimination, and there'll be a third one we're gonna talk about next, is our liver and our gut. Our liver actually goes and breaks down estrogen. So it's part of our pathway that helps metabolize our estrogen and break it down into ideally the safe forms of estrogen. We don't want an overabundance of 16 estrogen because too much of that is going to cause DNA damage and inflammation and it's linked to higher rates of cancer, which is why I like looking at the Dutch test because it gives me that whole breakdown. So if we have improper breakdown or our liver's not functioning properly because we either have things like fatty liver or our liver's overworked because we're exposing it to a lot of different toxins, whether it's from phthalates and BPA and chemicals like glyphosate and herbicides and pesticides and all of those things, our liver is going to get tired. And when it gets tired, what happens is it can't do the job as well as it can or as well as it should. So what happens is those estrogens don't get broken down and they ultimately get recirculated. The second or the third part actually is phase three because liver is phase one and phase two estrogen detoxification or estrogen breakdown. It happens in the liver. Phase three is actually our gut, our colon. We need to be removing those broken down estrogens via our feces. So if we're not having regular bowel movements, if we are not pooping every single day, the right amount out, nevertheless, what's going to happen is we're going to have recirculation of those estrogens because we're ultimately going to reabsorb them because our colon, all of the feces and the waste products and the toxins in there are not leaving our body. So when I said it's likely a drainage issue, it very well come, can come down to our liver and our gut not properly removing and eliminating estrogen. The fourth component is actually too low of progesterone. Now, there's many things that can cause low progesterone. It can be like anovulation, meaning you're not ovulating, which could be due to estrogen dominance or PCOS or low ovarian reserve. There's a bunch of things that can cause you to not ovulate. But what else can happen is if you don't have proper flow of your lymphatic system, you're not going to have the ability to keep your estrogen in check. One of the ways that progesterone actually travels through our body is through our lymphatic system and many 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 individuals that have estrogen dominance also have stagnant lymph so if your lymphatic system is stagnant it's not going to be able to go and keep estrogen in check which then means if progesterone's not there to like manage and control estrogen estrogen's just gonna keep going crazy 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 i call estrogen like my party girl and progesterone is more of the friend that like calms her down tells her okay no more shots let's have some water instead like the responsible one. So if we don't have enough of those responsible friends, estrogen just goes bonkers and we end up with all those symptoms that I mentioned in the beginning. So what are some things that I do with somebody when they come in with estrogen dominance? Well, first I make sure that they have it by doing the right and appropriate testing. My favorite is Dutch test and you do the testing based on your cycle. So it's done at specific times to make sure that we're getting the right measurements of your sex hormones. After I have that, then what I I do is I do a few things. I make some lifestyle changes. We remove alcohol because alcohol actually is going to drive up estrogen dominance. So if it's not something that you can completely eliminate, you absolutely want to massively reduce your alcohol consumption. The other thing we want to do is we want to switch over and do at least the dirty dozen when it comes to produce organically. The other ones, the clean 15 I think is what it is now, can be bought conventional if you cannot 
not do all things organic, which I understand. So if you're gonna do the dirty dozen, things like tomatoes and lettuce and potatoes, buy those organic because they are the most heavily pesticide like and sprayed. We want to reduce our exposure. So making choices that way, not to mention, you know, choosing things like grass-fed, pasture-raised animals chickens, eggs, they're not gonna have the same effect on your hormone system, which will make it easier for you to regulate your hormones. The next thing I would recommend is when you're purchasing things like shampoos and conditioners and face wash and makeup and all those things, get the ones that are phthalate free, BPA free, paraben free, so that you're not exposing yourself to as many hormones that's going to drive your estrogen even higher. The next thing I would recommend is don't store food in plastic, store it in glass. So you can buy things like mason jars or use old glass jars from like olives or spaghetti sauce or whatever else. You don't have to go out and buy glass. Just reuse your glass that you've like ultimately saved, washed out, and you can store your food in there. The next thing I would recommend is doing some form of lymphatic drainage. And if you guys want more steps on lymphatic drainage, let me know below. I'll happily like give you guys some easy tips. But the other thing I would say is do things like castor oil packs to help support liver. It'll also help support gut movement. So having your more regular bowel movements is gonna be important. Chewing your food, all of these things are gonna be super important when it comes to supporting estrogen dominance along with supporting your drainage pathways. Let me know below if this was you and if you want more specific advice on how to support your drainage pathways if you have estrogen dominance. Thanks for being here, happy draining, and I'll see you next time.